We were, we were we were discovering places in the woods that we were we were walking places we had never been we had gone to different you know we called it worlds you know like other people's neighborhoods and stuff what you got going on here i want to play on this playground over here and then all of a sudden in the blink of an eye all of that went away That was uh, from the Daily. Um, I'm listening to NPR. That was Michael Barbero, who was interviewing a lady named uh, Raha. Um, I do not know how to pronounce her last name. I will see if I can get a uh, link to the story for um, the description underneath of this video. I was. I'm driving home. And I was planning on doing a video. Am I going the right way? Oh, Lord. I don't know if I'm driving the right way. They done changed up the streets here in D.C. And, and everything is just a mess here. Oh, I might be going the wrong way. Lord have mercy. I'm going to see. Anyway, um, yeah, they, they did a lot of construction here in D.C. And the roads and, uh, and the bridges and everything are so much different than anything that I am used to at all and it looks like we can salvage this yeah I, I know where I am now okay so you know I I was driving home and I said I have so many ideas that I would like to convey with the rest of the world and um, let me plug in my my uh, microphone <laughs> um, but what I had wanted to talk about, I know I can pretty much talk about at any time that I want to. Somebody had asked me before, like, what, what, do you, what do you focus on when you sit up here and you talk on your YouTube channel? Do you have a specific topic that you talk about? Is there a specific little niche that you're talking about? And I, my answer was no, it's not because Master Reflections is all about reflecting on your life and about those life lessons that come from it. And I really, you know, it's, it's my way of saying, you know, hey, rest of the world, you will not shut me up. And I'm a, I'm a talk about that another time because I'm, I'm, I was formulating the right way to convey exactly what that means. Um, but I mean, it's, it's ultimately to give you advice and hopefully you will understand some things better. You'll understand some things about yourself. Maybe you will not make the same mistakes that I made or someone else has made, or you can formulate a better plan of action from any uh, anything that I tell you. So um, I know that I don't have the answers to 
all of the world's woes. No one does. And my path is completely different than a lot of different people's paths. And what I know and what I've gone through is different than what some other people have gone through. I get that. There's a ton of information, ton of things that, that I can tell you, but you know, those things will take time to actually unfold. And I hope, I just hope that when I do these videos, I am talking to someone that will understand exactly what I'm talking about or they will understand exactly what they need to do and, and where I'm coming from with things because I'm just giving you these things as an example to fall back on. To fall back on and then you know you can you can formulate whatever that you want from it so if I tell you about me having makeup and you know me stepping out of my comfort zone it's not about my makeup it's about me stepping out of my comfort zone it's about me doing something that I have never done before and 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 standing in a new place that I have never stood before and relishing in the beauty that there is in that particular action and so I was going to talk to you about a different topic and so I'll bring that topic up another time I'll probably be wearing the same shirt I don't know but I turned on the radio because my radio is always on NPR I'm always listening to something I want to know what other people are going through in their lives I want to know what's happening on the other side of the world I want to be able to understand just life and uh, for those of you who don't know, I don't think I've ever really said this, but anyway, I have gone to school for psychology, and I do plan on talking about that in a video. I've gone to school for psychology. I don't have a, a, a degree yet. I am this close to my um, getting my, my bachelor's in, um, in psychology, and what I love the most, what I want to have my niche in in the rest of my particular life is social psychology. That stuff just gets me going. I love social psychology because I want to know, I want to know why. I want to know why, 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 why. <laughs> I, I grew up asking that question all the time. I did not grow up in Generation Y, but I do remember asking my father why, and then he'd give an answer, and i go, why? Because each and every answer is a different layer of that onion that you are peeling back so anyway, you I know you're probably wondering what in the world does that have to do with you starting off this daggone program with this sad old story. And I'm going to tell you, you need to know that girl's story. I'm going to tell you what really drew me in into that particular conversation that was going on with Rahaf and Michael Barbero before I turned on the radio. I mean, before I turned on this thing so I could talk to you guys. So I, I you know, I have the radio on. I, I'm, I'm getting ready for my drive. I'm following my GPS because I need to go home in this daggone traffic. And I'm just about to talk. So I'm about to turn this thing off. And he asked her a question. He said, she said, what do you do? And he's like, uh, he's like, you know, what happens there, you know, uh, when there's a bombing? And she's like, everybody runs to the living room. And so she goes off to talk about something else. He brings her back. And he's like, well, wait a minute. What exactly is the significance of you guys, of everyone in the house, running to the living room? Because she's in Palestine, right? She's in Gaza Strip in the center, in the center of everything in Palestine. And for you guys that uh, don't know, there's a huge, there's a huge conflict that's back and forth right now between the Israelis and, and the Palestinians that's going on right now. This is different than what normally goes on between the two of them. I mean, like both sides are like stark raging mad and they are bombing the heck out of each other as much as they, you know, can, it seems like. So there's been to date. 200 people in Palestine that's been accounted for that's um, that that have died from the bomb bombings from the people from Israel and Israel have lost you know like a, a way smaller number than that I think it was like less than 50 I think it was like 12 but so you know you can go back and listen to the the story so it's disproportionately worse on the Palestinian side than it is for the Gaza Strip uh, I mean for the for the Israeli side so you know, I, 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 I feel for any set of people who are, are oppressed and are, are, are going through some things. You know, like, I don't know what, what sparked all of this stuff, this latest round of conflicts between the, the two parties. I mean, the two places, I don't know. Um, so, but what I do know 
is that I know that the Palestinian people have been absolutely oppressed this whole entire time that I know that I have been alive to even know anything about them. I know that there was a wall that was erected and that they can't come outside of that wall. I know that everything that they do is kind of self-contained all up in there. I know that, um, you know, there, there are a lot of people who can sympathize with the Palestinian people because they're people, 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 people. Forget who they are. You know, like, they're, they're not a, a group of really bad people. They're just people that was there on that particular set of land. And then some other people decided to come in and say, this is our land. And they're like, no, wait a minute. Ooh, who does that sound like? America. With the Indians right i mean like let's be honest for real for real you know i wasn't here when that time was was there i was brought here my peoples was brought here my peoples was brought here on the daggone boats and everything and i just happened to be american because my ancestors was born slaves and they was here on american soil okay that's where i get my daggone you know nationality from because my peoples my ancestors was brought here on boats you know and told to, to work fields and houses and other things like that and build for you know slave masses and everything so that's how my people got here so um you know so i i, I can understand I, I totally can understand where that set of people is coming from so the um their israeli people are occupying over there and they're like every time i turn around and the palestinian people are like they, they took our, our olive groves you know so these people are really mad. They, they, they're like, you know, you keep on stealing and stealing and stealing. It's like, come on, how much turning in a sheet can I do? But anyway, let's go back to this lady who is on the phone and in the middle of the Gaza Strip, you know, she's saying, hey, my family, we get together in the living room when there's a bomb going off. So when, so so he, he, he t brings her back to that point. It's like, okay, so why do you guys do that? She said, because... And this is what really touched me and this is what got me to stop in my tracks and really listen to what this lady was going to say next because I, 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 I you think you know what people are going to say but you, you have no idea she said we go to the living room to make sure that everyone is there we go to the living room because we want to say okay everybody's here and and so she goes off and starts talking about something else and, and you know the interviewer goes back and says, wait, 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 wait. Why, why do you want to make sure that everybody is there? And she says, because, you know, you or I were probably thinking what I was thinking was, that's the most fortified area of the house. That's the, the, the safest place to be. That, no, <laughs> those are not the reasons why. You want to know why she said that? She answered that it was because if you die together, no one will have to be left behind. Like, let that sink in. Let that sink in. I have never, I have never heard anything like that before in my life. I mean, here in America, we worry about whether or not there's gonna be a tornado. You have a, a, a cellar and you, the, the twist to come and you go run into the to the cellar to make sure that you're underground so the twist don't get you. To make sure that maybe, hopefully it's not a hurricane, it's bringing a whole bunch of wind and rain and all that other stuff. You go down there to the cellar and you hope to survive. You hope to survive in the most fortified area of the house so you can get through some things, right? So you can see the light of day. You cuddle together because that's the safest place to be together not because you want to be together and die together like that's deep she so so his follow-up his follow-up was so you're saying that you don't want to be a survivor if anyone dies she said no I cannot imagine she said I cannot imagine surviving without my family <laughs> Let, let that sink in. Forget about everything else and let that sink in. I don't want to be a survivor. She says she don't care about life unless it's with the people she loves. Unless it's with the people she, she said that she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to survive. 
She doesn't want, what kind of mentality do you have to have? What kind of upbringing do you have to have? What kind of everyday oppression of your spirit do you have to experience? To say that life is only worth living unless it's with my family, not my husband, not my kids. It's with all of us. It's with all of us. You know, that, that was deep. And so that made me think, how petty, how petty are you? How petty and spoiled are you? to have your life ran every day by thinking about how you're going to get back at someone because of something dumb they may have said because of because they may have outdressed you or or outsmarted you on the on, on the court or something or, or or maybe they maybe they got a guy that you had been wanting for a while maybe maybe if you're a guy that somebody got a girl that you had been after you know Maybe somebody, maybe somebody has got a job. You know, you have a job. You have a job. Let's say you have a job because I know there's a lot of people that don't have a job. But you have a job. But you mad at somebody else. And you think that they took your job from you. And you ready to go and do what? I don't know. But how petty. How petty. How, how small are your problems compared to people who have to live like that, to people who have grown up with that? Because that girl is 22 years old. She don't know nothing. She don't know nothing but what she is living. Because one of his other questions is, well, you know, there's a campaign going on right now and, you know, there's conflict and everything. And, and she, he said, when, what, is, what is normal like? Her answer was, there is no normal. There's no one, but there's always a bomb going off. There doesn't have to be a skirmish. She didn't say skirmish. She said something else. But she said there doesn't have to be a skirmish. She, she said there doesn't have to be a heightened sense of, 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 uh, of danger. It's just a bomb. Every day. Every day. You know. And she said that earlier in the video, and, and, I mean, not in the video, she said that earlier in the, in the interview on the radio. And I thought to myself, okay, I remember when I was young and I was, and I was growing up in Southeast DC, and I remember that it was during the crack epidemic. And I remember that every time you turned around, one of your friends died. Like when I grew up, it was so many people that was outside and running around and playing and just having a ball, having a grand time, you know, playing catch a girl, freak a girl. <laughs> yes, I said that. Uh, playing, playing, you know, like in other people's world, I guess it would be tag. But, you know, we just, we had so much fun. We were riding our bikes. We were popping wheelies. We were, we were, we were discovering places in the woods that we were we were walking places we had never been we had gone to different you know we called it worlds you know like other people's neighborhoods and stuff what you got going on here i want to play on this playground over here and then all of a sudden in the blink of an eye all of that went away and every night somebody that you knew died every night Somebody who you had a crush on passed away because they were shot by the cops because somebody said that they had a gun on them. And they did. They did have a gun on them. You know, and 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 then somebody that you knew was in a shootout. Somebody who you knew was driving in a car somewhere. Somebody who you knew was walking down the street was in the wrong place at the wrong time and they just got gunned down because they was looking for somebody else and not that person. I lived in a house where every day there was a gun violence shooting and everything and so you had to drop down on the ground and you had to get to the spot where there wasn't a window you had to get to the middle of the house because it was the safest place in the house you didn't want to get shot you thought that if you slept by that window you were going to die because somebody was going to shoot through it well this girl had to deal with rockets she has to deal with bombings forget People running around with AK-47s and, 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 and all kinds of other stuff going on. What, what? 
semi-auto, semi, semi, semi shotguns. Back then, it was like the real popular thing to have was like a a, a sawed-off shotgun and 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 you know and uh, Uzis, Uzis. Oh yeah, Uzis. That's right. You know, it was just it was nuts. It was nuts how I grew up. I don't talk about it much, but you know, me and my cousin, we were sitting back a couple of weeks ago, and we were sitting up there saying, you know. We don't understand some of my cousins and stuff, some of my nieces, some of my nephews is coming up right now. We don't understand why they want to run to danger. We don't understand why they think it's cool to hang out with the wrong people. We don't understand why they think it's okay to not call and come back home. We don't understand that. We don't understand. And I said to her, I said it's because they don't fear anything. See, when I was younger, I remember that it was always someone else before the crack pan, pan, uh, epidemic really hit. It was always someone else. Or well, they got AIDS, that's somebody else. Or well, they got pimped out, that was somebody else. Or well, they on drug, that's somebody else. Your mama's on crack rock, that's somebody else. It wasn't your family, it wasn't your house. Until it started to become that, did we realize that there was danger in this world there was danger in all of this things that we thought was nice and everything that you know could be up head up heaved up just turned over just everything that you knew that you thought you knew was going to be gone in an instant in a flash you know it was it was it was it was humbling but it wasn't humbling because you didn't have no time to be humble you didn't have no time to be humbled. You just had to deal with the new normal. This is the new normal. This is the new normal. This is her new normal. Wait a minute. This was her life. She don't know what it was like to have all of the people run around. She don't know what it was like to have fun. She don't know what it's like to explore those different areas that you never explored before. She doesn't know that. She doesn't know what it's like to go away from her country. And for us in America, America's so big. It's like going away from our country. It's like me going from D.C. to South Carolina. That's a whole new country. What in the hell? It's funny, but it's not funny. It's so humbling. How petty are you? How petty? How petty are you to sit up there and still hold on to, to anger and, 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 and resentment and, and, and just all those negative things that could go on through your life every day? How petty are you? You don't know what it's like to live every day as your last day. You don't know. You young people coming up, you don't know. You don't know what it's like. I know what it's like to grow up hungry and to grow up thinking if I could just put this pack of fucking hot dogs in my pocket, I won't be hungry for a day. People don't know this about me, but I squirrel away food. I do. Because I remember what it was like not to have any when I was growing up. I remember what it was like to go to the store and not be able to buy anything. I had to use food stamps. You know, we had to use food stamps. If it wasn't for them food stamps, we'd be so, we'd be so skinny. We'd be so hungry. So I appreciate those food stamps. I appreciate those government subsidies and the foods and stuff that they used to give out. I, I appreciate the government cheese. I do. Everybody know that government cheese is the best cheese. And if, in, if no, ain't nobody told you yet that that government cheese is the same daggone deluxe cheese that they sell in the store. Kraft sells deluxe cheese. That's the same thing as daggone government cheese that they used to have back in the day. The best damn cheese around. As a matter of fact, I think that the government cheese tasted better than, than, the, than the Kraft deluxe now. But you know, it's like these first world problems, man. These first world problems, you just, you just should sit back and count your blessings. You should sit back and think about all the wonderful, great things that you have in your life. You really do need to do that. Because you might be struggling 
But do you have a roof over your head? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. You might be struggling and you might be hungry. But are you alive? Can you make it the next day? Can you think of something awesome? Is there an opportunity for you? I keep on thinking about how hungry I was when I was growing up. Like, no joke. I was so damn hungry. And that's the one thing that I never want my children to experience. I never want that. I never want that. I, I hope to raise humble children, but I'm going to tell you right now, my children are spoiled. You know, they sit back on, on, on tablets. I ain't never had no tablet. I had to figure out how to, you know, play with a toy and, you know, just have an imagination and just think of stuff. So many things that this first world has that that third world has no idea about. They would rather run to a living room and die together than live a day. It's almost as if she's saying that death is a blessing. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. That is so sad. And, uh, I pray for a better day. I pray for a better day. This world needs an enema. <laughs> the Joker said, "This town needs an enema." <laughs> but no, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not making jokes about it. I'm not. I'm not. It. It is just so humbling. How petty are you? How petty? How selfish are you? How low vibrational are you? And if you are none of those things, then that is a wonderful thing. That's great. Each one, teach one. Go out and, and try to lift somebody up and try to tell them and try to encourage them to be better. Just like I am here on this platform. You know, I have a voice. People are listening. Oh, my God. <laughs> but how petty? How petty are you? Not to recognize the blessings that God has given you in your life. You're not her. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna say about that topic right now. But I just was, I was, I was humbled by what she said. I really was, I really am, I really am. All right. I hope that this message has gotten through to somebody. I'm not gonna do no editing on here. I don't think there's anything I need to take out or anything. Sometimes I might, I might change a word or two here and there. But I don't think I'm going to do that for this one. But, uh, but yeah. You guys. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to support this channel. Because you know I'm going through a divorce. I need money for that. For my legal fees. Um, I am not above a handout. Not at all. I'll leave my cash app in the description below and uh look it up you know follow me on my other page if you care i'll talk to you later miss k is out oh you keep it it's too pretty for me to take <laughs> You're just as pretty. Thank you. <laughs>